Welcome everybody, it's my pleasure to be here today. My name is Dr. Wainford, I'm a professor of cardiology at Emory University School of Medicine, and it's my pleasure to be here today with Jesus, who has presented some really exciting novel findings today. If you could introduce yourself for the audience, please. Yeah, thank you very much, Professor Wainhart. I am Jesus Megarejo and uh, an assistant professor in neuroscience at the University of Texas at Rio Grande Valley. It is my pleasure to be here in the American Heart Association Hypertension Congress and honored to have the, uh, the opportunity to talk about nonlinear variability, uh, specifically when we measure uh, blood pressure for 24 hours in relation to uh, cognitive impairment and dementia. That's a fantastic topic. It fits yeah. in beautifully in the session you're talking and focused on yeah. aging and hypertension. And you're touching on some really exciting work linking blood pressure to cognitive outcomes. Would you be able to explain in a simple way the work that you've done and highlight the key findings for us, please? There's been for a couple of decades, these uh, numerous studies showing that when we measure a biological function, let's say a blood pressure, heart rate, repeatedly within minutes, 24 hours, days, weeks, years, the more it changes every time we measure, the more likely, I mean, this is association, that more likely cognitive impairment and dementia prevalence and dementia risk. And there's still the, a couple of years back growing evidence showing that, you know, maybe we should look also into blood pressure variability when we are talking about cognitive impairment and dementia. Of course, now with the new guidelines, we have to focus on controlling blood pressure. That's, uh, of course, that's something that is going to be the main goal. But for us, uh, um, us researchers, also physicians, are also looking into blood pressure variability and see if we are able to identify this as a novel risk factor for cognitive impairment and dementia. And what I'm doing, um, I have looked into blood pressure variability over 24 hours. So we set up the ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. Okay. It depends on how you program it, but it could be every 50 minutes, 20 minutes, or every 30 minutes for 24 hours. So we get daytime and we get nighttime blood pressure readings. And we are able then to measure how, up, how much blood pressure changes over time during 24 hours. So you're looking at the yeah. changes in blood pressure yeah. up and down over yeah. 24 hours. Yeah. You're not talking about the magnitude of high blood pressure. You're yeah. looking at the change of the baseline of blood yeah. pressure in that yes. person. Yes. The higher your average daytime, nighttime, or 24-hour blood pressure, that also is associated with uh, uh, cognitive impairment and dementia. But yes, as you mentioned, I'm looking into changes in blood pressure. And, and this is the, I want to say the, the, what we are bringing to, to the table is that all the evidence that we have or every study that we have conducted to measure blood pressure variability we have implemented what we call metrics of linear variability, such as a standard deviation. So we know a standard deviation is a metric that quantifies how far away a data point, in this case, blood pressure points, are from the mean. And there are other metrics that quantifies every change among consecutive blood pressure readings. What we are bringing to the table is that we can analyze variability using nonlinear metrics. Okay. This is a theory uh, that was uh, published in the 90s. And I'm going to give you an example. We are talking about when we have repeated measurements, time series measurements, we can quantify the degree of regulation and complexity. One metric is entropy. Mm -hmm. So entropy is not applied to medicine. It's a concept that comes from physics. And the, it, it quantifies when we have a system that is dynamic it quantifies the degree of regulation, and essentially the lower the entropy, the more rigid the system is. So in the, the work half in, in the 90s showed that as we age, our biological system, dynamic biological system becomes rigid. So if you're seeing a person as they age, for example, they walk, they walk slower. Later evidence showed that you had the other way around, a chaotic system. So the higher the entropy, when you have a dynamic system, the more chaotic, irregular, unpredictable the system is going to become. So when we do the 24-hour blood pressure assessments, because it follows a circadian rhythm that should be regulated, what we are doing right now is to quantify the degree of complexity by calculating entropy, calculating all the metrics such as the trend of flotation analysis. Essentially, it captures how blood pressure over 24 hours behave. And we are able to also 
show, for example, that as we age, the variability in blood pressure over 24 hours becomes rigid. In addition to proving or replicating these principles back uh, three decades ago, we are finding that the more a more chaotic system, when we look into blood pressure for 24 hours, the more unpredictable it is, the higher the chances of cognitive impairment, have a lower global cognitive function, and also is associated with dementia prevalence incidence. And we are using two data sets to replicate this hypothesis because I wanted to make sure that this is not just in one cohort. And we are using data from the Spring Mind trial to replicate this, and we have found the same. So if we measure blood pressure for 24 hours and we quantify the complexity of the, of the dynamic system, a more chaotic system, we relate to higher chances of cognitive impairment and dementia. That's the key. So one of the TECO messages sounds as though just from 24 ambulatory blood pressure monitoring, you believe you can understand or predict yeah. the risk of cognitive impairment. Yes, yes. That is a fantastic advance in the field of looking at blood pressure regulation and cognitive impairment. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for that walkthrough of the work you're doing. I'm really looking forward to it. And it's been a great pleasure to meet with you. Thank you very much for your time and the research that you're conducting. Yeah, no, thank you very much.